Hi folks, it's Andy. Welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. Okay, here we are for another week. We've got some fantastic questions for you today. We've got loads, so we're going to start firing through them in just a second. But before we do, don't forget, help somebody start Kendo, like and share this video, subscribe, all the stuff that YouTube likes, because then it helps it show these videos to other people, and then they might see it and start Kendo, and that's all thanks to you. So make sure you do that. But most importantly, support the channel, keep the camera rolling, keep the lights on, Shop at Kendo Star. KendoStar.com is my website. Of course, I would say it was brilliant. So if you check out our trust pilot rating, all of our reviews, you'll see how fantastic we are. And I'm sure there's people in your dojo. Of course, there's people in your dojo using Kendo Star. Where, where else are they going to shop? It's the best place around. Uh, so get to KendoStar.com and keep these videos coming. Okay, let's jump into these uh, questions. First one. Uh, so I've got quite a lot of questions today. They've come to me, some by email, some by uh, private message on Facebook. Uh, and most of them have come uh, from um, the Kendo Show Early Access group. Uh, I put a post in there every week asking for questions. If you're not in that group, you should be in the group. I'm, I'm not sort of plugged that for a while, to be honest, but it's a massive group. That's where all the que most of the questions come from. Get in there. The link is in the description. It's free to drink. Okay. Uh, hi, hope you're well. A very long time ago when I was young, I studied judo. My Japanese teacher introduced us to kendo by way of an exhibition. I was hooked, but at the stage, uh, uh, at the age of seven, and a low income in my family meant it was impossible. And then life took over. A lifetime later, I found myself retired and 70 years old. Question is, am I too old to start uh, kendo now? Uh, I will not be insulted if you say I am. Always believe to have uh, the courage to ask. You must first have the courage for the answer. Uh, thank you for your time. So, um, no, you're absolutely not too old to start. Absolutely not. Look, let's be honest with each other, though. You're not going to, like, uh, you know, be representing your national team, probably. You might struggle to get uh, to sort of uh, seventh or eighth, Dan. Uh, <laughs> um, but there's absolutely no reason why, you know, if, you, if you're fit and healthy, um, you can't get yourself down to Dojo um, and, and get started right away. Some of my students are, are a similar age. Um, so, you know, uh, it's definitely not... Um, not not a, a problem at all um you, you are gonna have to be honest with yourself you are gonna have to um work within your own limits of course don't push yourself uh, harder than you're capable of but go down there speak to uh, the teachers involved uh, and i'm sure they'll be uh, very accommodating for you i think there's still a lot a lot to gain from practicing kendall um even in sort of uh you know um sort of advanced ages should we say <laughs> uh, okay uh, so uh, I mean you know 70 is not old these days anyway is it you know what I mean like um, it's not like it used to be so I'm, uh, I'm sure you'll rock it alright uh, next one what are the reasons why many police tournaments are so tough uh, once you said that you didn't uh, want to go into it I immediately became interested okay so this is from a sort of throwaway, throwaway comment that I made in the last video talking about um, I think the question was about Ashibarai the foot sweeps in Kendall and how they are allowed in the police tournaments but not in others um, and I think I sort of mentioned how police tournaments are a little bit more rough and tumble than other tournaments and they are a little bit um, sort of more aggressive and I didn't really want to get into it. It's not a topic I really like talking about because I know I hold slightly controversial opinions on it. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the police tournaments. I don't think they're a great idea. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of the idea of, um, you know, uh, of, of, of Kendall being a police thing, um, if I'm honest. Um but it is it is what it is. It's not something that's that's likely to change, or um, you know, uh, it's certainly not in the in the the near future. Um, but look, one of, 
Do I really want to go into this? I'm not sure. Look, uh, the reason I don't particularly like the police tournaments is if you do watch the police tournaments, they're very, very aggressive. A lot of things go out of the window. Um, it, it can get a little bit away from what Kendall really is, even Shi'ai, um, even though it's Shi'ai, you know, uh, and it, it, it can turn into just an, an all-out fight. Uh, and the reason for that is because there's literally people's jobs on the line. Um, so, you know, you've got people there that are sort of fighting um, with the outcome, determining how they're going to be able to provide for themselves and their family, potentially. Um, and I don't like that, uh, to be honest. And I think that affects the Shi'ai itself. I think that's why um, the, the, the tournaments or the, the contents of the Shi'ai themselves can be a little bit overly aggressive. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it's a... Uh, it's, it's the way the system is, but you know, uh, the the kendo is really engraced in police culture in Japan. The, you know, it's it's really um, considered important for police officers to to practice martial arts, whether it's kendo or judo, and um, those that are sort of part of the special kendo um, groups or teams, uh, the tokuren, those sort of things. You know, for some of them, their job is to represent their police force in the police championships. So when, you know, they don't necessarily produce a result that's what what's wanted, they'll, they might have pressure or, um, you know, uh, what can I say, uh, reprehension from people um, above them, you know, their bosses and stuff like that, who don't actually do Kendall. Um you know, there's, there's all sorts of weird pressures that I'm not really on board with, uh, to be honest. But it is what it is. It's not something that I'm saying should or will change. Um, it's just, just my sort of thoughts on it. All right. Um, I don't really want to go into it more than that before I upset someone. Um, I, I don't think anyone that's going to get upset to a level where I care about it is, is going to be watching this. But still, just in case. Uh, <clears throat> okay, next one. Um, any tips for a seventh Q grading? Yeah, uh, do everything that your teachers taught you. Make sure you wear your uniform uniform properly uh, and the borger properly if you're wearing the borger. Um, care about the small details, doing the day properly, um, doing your best kamae and use a loud voice um, and try to use some semblance of kikentai no ichi. That's the unification of the sword, body and spirit. So whether you're using suriyashi that the... The, the, the feet and the body as well as the sword and the, the spirit are all unified and it's not all sort of out of sync all right um, but follow, follow what your teacher's telling you and I'm sure you'll be fine all right just just do your best uh, next one um, hi Andy I was wondering if you could mention a couple of senseis per hitting spot like men kote uh, men ski koten do uh, that perform in your opinion the epitome of what hit should look like in each of them uh, for mitori geiko purposes uh thanks a lot for your time videos and dedication to bringing uh, people to kendall um p.s i'd really appreciate if you could somehow write the names you mentioned so i don't make a mess of the phonetics cheers um okay it's it's i i get what you're asking what you're asking is like for each like strike zone like give you an idea of who you should go and sort of google i've got a i've got a series of videos that i'm working on at the minute i've already put a couple out there that do exactly that all right it's not so much that all right it's not that I, it's like oh this you know if you, if you want to study men's strikes look at this player or if you want to study contest strikes look at this player but what it is is saying right okay for your mitori geiko here's here's a player you should look at um i've already done it i think for uh miyazaki masahiro sensei and uh, Murayama Chinatsu Sensei. Um, and I've got more coming as well. Um, so keep keep your eyes out for that. Um, I mean, just to, to roll a couple off. Obviously, the one that sticks out is if you're talking about uh, uh, Ski, then obviously everybody is going to want to look at Eiga Naoki Sensei, right? Yeah, he's he's very famous for his ski waza. Having said that, it's the same as all of them, though. You know, these players that play at such high levels, all of their waza are fantastic, you know. Um, so don't just look at that. Um, I'd say as well that uh, Takanabe Susumu Sensei is also um, a, a master at doing ski, um, but also he's a fantastic uh, example of brilliant, beautiful men's strikes. 
and cutter strikes. <laughs> okay. Um, of course, men strikes, you would, you know, uh, Miyazaki Masahiro, who, uh, sensei, who I just talked about. Amazing men strikes, changed the face of Kendall, frankly. Uh, Teramoto Shoji Sensei, also uh, men strikes, uh, Kote strikes as well. Really amazing Oji Waza as well. Um, so yeah, there's there's quite a lot there. Uh, it's a bit hard to say Do. Do isn't a Waza that comes up quite as much. Um, I can't think of off the top of my head. All of those senseis, you'll find fantastic examples of them doing Do as well. Um, so... Yeah, uh, that's just a that's just a, a a light sort of brush of the sur surface. There's loads though, uh, but keep an eye on this channel and I'll st I'll, I'll I'll do some more um sort of player spotlight videos as well. Okay. Uh, next one, Andy. Good morning. Excuse me for interrupting you, but I want to ask a question. Okay, so this is one that came to me by Facebook message. Uh, what should be the training of a Kenshi? What should the training of a Kenshi be like after 50 years of age? Taking into account that I don't plan to be part of a national team, but I'd like to compete in tournaments from time to time. What should I focus on from now? Uh, how should I organize my workouts? What should be my goal as a Kenshi now and for years to come? So um, it depends what level you're at at the minute. But um, yeah, I, absolutely. Um, try to keep healthy uh, and to keep in shape. Uh, if that means doing some extra strength training as well so that you can keep your body free from injury, it's definitely worth doing. Um, obviously, you're not going to be able to move as quickly and as energetically as somebody in their sort of teen, late teens or early 20s. That's fine. Um, you know, uh, I'm sort of not able to do that either. Um, and I'm sort of around 40, right? So I'm 38. Um, and it's like, yeah, I can't move anyway near as fast as, as someone 20 years younger than me but um what I have to do is I have to be a bit more efficient um and I have to use my experience so gaining experience of course is important uh but in terms of uh what you're you know focusing on in your in your actual keiko you really need to you know keep focused on the basics um this is something I really think is important if you watch um you know really accomplished kendo car who are sort of in their 50s sort of uh, in the, they might be sort of seventh or eighth dan, but you know if if you if you watch them and you'll see um, that their movements um, are efficient, but they are very much adherent to the basics. There's very few that are doing something that's different or weird. So making sure that you are still doing fumikomi, you don't have to do a really hard uh, stamp, but you are doing fumikomi. You ha are making strikes that have kiken tai no ichi okay uh, and satisfy the criteria of you called that that's something you really need to focus on and you need to focus on it especially as we start to you know as our, our body doesn't manage to keep up quite so much with our brain perhaps um and, and keep focusing on those points um even while you're just doing your basic kihon geek or your basic striking practice or doing your kirikaishi um and try not you know, there's some things you have to accept, you know, as you get older, okay, I don't have maybe the stamina, I don't have the speed, but that doesn't mean that you can't move in the correct way, okay? Um, so, uh, you know, look at other Kenshi as well, like famous ones that are of a similar age, even if they're like 8th Dan. Like, looking, there's nothing wrong with looking like the 8th Dan and saying, like, and, you know, trying to sort of think about especially if they're similar age to you and look at them and sort of try to emulate their movements doesn't mean emulate their semi that's different yeah because you can't do that unless you are eighth dan um it's one of the main things that separates them as eighth dan but you know it doesn't mean you know okay i'm sort of in my 50s or whatever that means i just have to stand there and do semi when you're not really doing semi you just sort of stood there waiting um it i'm, I'm saying this because it's a trap a lot of people fall into um but when they make strikes, try to make your strikes look like their strikes. Okay, uh, that's the that's what I'm saying there. Uh, next one, hey sensei, hope all is well. First, I'd like to say thanks for the critique video. Oh, no problem. Uh, that was the video that I did last earlier this week, um, where you sent a video to me, um, and we made a, a video on this channel uh, where I gave you some feedback uh, and advice. Uh, it's the second one I've done. I've already got some more submissions, so we'll be doing some more in the coming weeks too. Uh, we really appreciate it. Good. Second, I had a question about my men. Sometimes when I'm wearing it for quite a while, the back of the 
the back top of my head gets kind of gets uh, kind of gets sore. Uh, am I wearing it too tight or too loose? Thanks. Um, it's unlikely that it's that it's too tight. Um, and I can't really. It, I mean, it might be that it's too loose. Um, it's probably more likely that the place that you're tying it is perhaps not ideal. All right. So make sure that the knot is at the eye level. Um, and that it is tied firmly, where well, you tie it firmly and then you need to pull those men daddy, the, the flaps here on the side of the men like this, just to alleviate the pressure off your ears, okay? And then the other thing is, uh, make sure you drink enough water, because <laughs> you'd be surprised that dehydration can, you know, cause, cause headaches or soreness in the head as well. Uh, and then finally, you know, um, if it starts to, to hurt, Take it off and put it back on again. Just take a second. Take it off. Put it back on again. Um, it might be that your tenagui is sort of funny or like put like lumping up in a certain place. It's putting pressure on. You know, look at all these things. I doubt it's that you're tying it too tight. Um, to be honest, it needs to be tied quite tight to your head. Uh, so, yeah, it's hard for me to massively say much more without actually seeing it. I hope that helps enough. <laughs> Uh, next one, I have a new student has, who has severe flat feet and has been instructed by his uh, podiatrist to not perform any activities barefooted. He's requested that he be allowed to wear shoes in the door jaw and be able to do kendo with his shoes on as he has special inserts that go into his shoes too. What would your advice on this be? Um, my, if, if, if I had a student that came to me and asked if they could wear shoes in the door jaw, uh, the answer is no. Um, it's not possible. You can't do kendo with shoes on. Um... And it's not safe uh, for that person or for the people, uh, the other people in the dojo. So no, the answer is no. Uh, they can't do it with shoes on. Um, if they can't do it barefooted, then I recommend like the full tabby or something like that. Um, I noticed someone else commented below this and said, you know, that they knew someone that got some inserts for the tabby. Uh, that might be possible too. Um, but uh, no, the, the, they can't wear the shoes in the door door. It's not. It's it's not. It's it's not correct. It's not safe. It's not possible for them to do kendo with the shoes on. Um. So, uh, they're gonna have to figure out a way of getting around it. Either they need to t talk to um the uh, podiatrist again, uh, maybe to understand more about kendo. Um. But uh, yeah, they can't be wearing shoes. Um. Sorry, <laughs> it's not not quite how it works. Um, you know, I, I don't. You know, there's obviously there's obviously some things that it's like saying not perform any activities barefooted. You know, I don't think he takes a shower in his shoes, right? So there's obviously some things he can do without shoes on. I'm not saying that it's the same as going in the shower, but what I am saying is there's got to be a sort of medium in between that a compromise can be struck that doesn't involve him wearing shoes. Um, cause I don't think that's the appropriate solution, uh, at all. I think it will cause far more problems than it'll solve. Uh, next one, great pick of your Preston Kenshin Kai Kendo class. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> would be interested to hear how you recruit members uh, and retain them. Keep up the good work. Okay, so uh, this is from uh, the Facebook page of my dojo, uh, Preston Kenshin Kai, uh, which is my club um, that me and my wife run uh, in the northwest of uh, the UK. Um, Basically, uh, I put a picture up from practice the other night. Uh, we had a pretty full dojo. We do get a pretty full dojo most nights. Um, in terms of how I recruit new members, at the moment, I don't recruit new members. <laughs> uh, we're not recruiting at the minute. In fact, I'm, I'm sort of turning people away at the minute because we're too full. I don't have the space in my dojo for new people. Um which is a great problem to have, of course. I would love to have more people, um, but I don't I don't have the space uh, or the room for it. We've thought about getting a bigger venue, but I don't really want to spread myself too thin either. Um, I, I'm really keen to focus on the students that I've got at the minute to get them sort of uh, to the level where I want them before I start concentrating on, on, on new people again. Of course, I'm very lucky that I'm in this situation where I can we can we can afford to do that with the membership that we've got. Um, so I don't recruit members at the minute. Uh, the way I recruited this current set of members is it was um, very simple. I just have a social media presence, not a massive one, but I do have a social media presence, uh, and um, I um, I guess it was last last year. 
uh, we put out, we run it as a, we only run recruitment at cer certain times. I don't take people on an ad hoc basis. So I take people in a group, uh, they come along and try as a group. Uh, then hopefully they come back next week and however many of the group then sign up for six weeks um, and um, they do a sort of entry. Oop, I've just knocked the microphone. Sorry if you just got a rumble. Uh, they do a sort of course uh, of six weeks where they learn the, the basics of Kindle and we try to get them up to a point where they can join a re regular practice. Um, and then um, we integrate them into a, a sort of full Kindle practice after that. Um, we've been very fortunate, of course, that we've, we from our last cohort of people, we've kept quite a lot of them. Um, and uh, I think um, in terms of re retaining them... Uh, there's a couple of things. Uh, first, I think it's really important to do your best to be encouraging uh, whilst also honest um, and also um, enthusiastic when uh, delivering instruction. Um, I teach my entire class at once, um, at least in the beginning. Uh, usually for the first hour or so, I, te I te teach the entire class um, equally. I don't separate anybody. Um, w you know, everybody is on the same level whilst we warm up, do sabudi, we do sort of beginning exercises. And then we'll separate it um, between uh, those that are ready to wear borg and those that aren't. Uh, and I'm very lucky as well that I've got, a, you know, um, I've got, the support of other dojo members um who are of various levels uh we've got several that are sort of fifth down level uh fourth down level stuff like that show down level as well um that are in in Borgo, so i don't have to worry too much about you know <laughs> uh, about that uh too um you know I, I can i've got a lot of people i can rely on uh, and trust to help me um you know, if we want to need to split the class or anything like that. Uh, and then the other thing is we just try to make sure that everybody, um, everybody doesn't feel too distant um, from, from us. Uh, I don't, um, you know, we do, we do use the, uh, you know, uh, traditional Japanese uh, layout of the dojo and operation of the dojo. We use a, a traditional t terminology. As most of you will know, I'm quite purist in terms of kendo. I like it to be done properly and correctly. Um, so, you know, I do, uh, you know, my students refer to me as sensei and, and the other sensei is sensei and this sort of thing. And, and the, you know, that sort of thing is, is, is important as part of it. We do the proper deho and all that. And I think that's really important because I think that gives people something that they're looking for in Kendo. I know when I came to Kendo, I was looking for something that was quite disciplined in that respect. Um, and then also we have another side where we're less formal and we're, we're very, uh, you know, we're, you know, we'll have like a Christmas party and we'll, we arranged a, a Christmas party for the whole dojo. We, everybody, we went sort of temping bowling and had, uh, you know, had food and stuff like that. Um, and, and tried to keep a good sort of atmosphere amongst everybody. Um, and you know, stuff like that, I think really helps, helps people stick around, um, to be honest, uh, as well. Uh, you know, and it, 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 it's been really great, um, because I know that, that retention's difficult, um, for, for, for a lot of clubs to keep members in there. It is difficult because lots of people come to Kendo. It's not quite what they expect. Um, one thing I have always done is when I have a beginner's course, when they sign up is I always email them. I send out emails before they come to the first class and I make sure I send, um, the video that I made that things they have to know before they start Kendall. Uh, so they sort of know what they're getting into before they turn up, uh, which helps a lot too. Um, you know, some things like the, the previous questions, can they wear shoes in the dojo? You know, it's not an uncommon question. People ask me that and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll come in this, you know, before they'll come to the first lesson, they'll message me, oh, I watched your video, it says it's barefoot, but I, d I don't like that. Can I wear shoes and stuff like that? And just honest right from the beginning, no, sorry, you can't. And, you know, I'm not, um, one thing I don't do, uh, is I am, th there's some things that I just won't compromise on. And one of them is the traditions of Kendo. Um, so, you know, if somebody comes to me and says, uh, for example, I don't want to, can I wear my socks? You know, no, it's, it, it you know, if you want to wear the socks to cover your feet, you have to wear the, the, the Kendo ones that we know have got the leather soles. So you're not going to slip over and hurt yourself. 
Um, can I wear shoes if they're just indoor shoes? No, you can't wear the shoes. And if I'm not afraid of somebody saying, well, that I, I want to do it this way, so... And, you know, uh, can you change it so I can do it the way I want to do it? I'm not afraid to say, no, you can't. And if, if that means that they're not going to come back, that's that's fine. Um, Kendall's not not really what they're looking for, I guess. So that's that's that. Uh, and I've always um, done my best to be sort of open and honest uh, in that respect as well. Um, but, yeah, otherwise, you know, uh, I guess I'm... You know, there's luck as well. <laughs> uh, there's luck as well. But it's not just, you know, it's, it's not just that. Um, I'd say a lot of it's down to the, the sort of team of uh, people at my club too that really help uh, run things uh, and, and create a good atmosphere. Yeah, so there's that, that as well. Uh, next one. Uh, hi, Andy. First off, uh, first of all, thank you for the contents uh, of the Lucky Bundle. Oh, no problem. Uh, I was hesitant initially, but after receiving it, I'm surprised at the amazing value in it. Uh, definitely everything in it can be put to good use. Um, this is one question, actually. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, no problem. That was the thing that we did uh, last month. Um, it's gone now, I'm afraid, because it was a limited deal. But you, you it was a, a sort of lucky bundle that we did where you bought it and you got um, basically double the value of stuff inside. But you didn't. It was like a blind buy thing. You didn't really know it was inside. But we did make sure to make, you know, that the things included were useful. You weren't going to get like two left cold day or something like that, <laughs> you know. Uh, so. That's that's what that's about. Uh, I have a question about a pair of Cote I got in it. I think it's a pair of Vanguard Cote. Uh, how can I take good care of its palm? From what I see, it's synthetic leather, and the initial set I got uh, years ago with synthetic leather got tons of holes in it. It wasn't a Kendo Star set. Um, now I know it's now I know better. <laughs> uh, I'm trying uh, trying it out, and I like how flexible it is so far, and its protection seems great. But I also want to make sure that I make them last. Okay, so, you know, you always only get holes in the, in the palms of your cote. In terms of the, uh, in terms of your, um, your new Vanguard cote, in terms of taking care of, if they are synthetic leather, there's not a massive amount you need to do. Um, there is a big variance in synthetic leather in terms of some that wear out really quickly and some that don't. We choose one that's really strong and tends not to wear out that fast. Um... And basically, the only thing you need to do with synthetic leather is just make sure it's dry before you use it. Okay, so don't, you know, don't use it. Leave it in your burger bag all week until you go to practice next time. And then you, they're still soggy next time you come to them. You know, take just make sure that you take care of them. When you finish practice, maybe give them a little bit of a wipe with a, with a, a dry cloth. Leave them to dry, fully dry, before you use them again. And if you're practicing like two or three times a week, don't use the same cote all week. Um, you'll wreck the cote. Um... If you're practicing like, yeah, like three or four times a week, I should say. Twice a week you can get away with one pair of cold day as long as you've got enough time for them to dry out. Uh, unless you're practicing like Monday and Tuesday, um, in which case you'll need two pairs. Um, it's just a fact, I'm afraid, <laughs> if you want them to last that long. Uh, but if you like practicing three times a week, it's definitely worth having at least two pairs. Let's say you practice Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, use one pair on Friday, uh, Monday, a different pair on Wednesday, and then the original pair on uh the friday yeah and then on the following monday you can use the ones you wore on the last wednesday and, and rotate them that way and that's how you'll get the best life out of them okay that's um that, that's the best way to go about using cold day if you train quite a lot uh next one hi andy uh any good ways to practice to strengthen my fundamentals of footwork with kendo i've been taking your advice from last week but i'm still trying to figure out how to be able to move my feet fast together like you said do you have good drills that could uh, that I could do that would help with that? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so <clears throat> I get this kind of question quite a lot, and um, don't take this. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sort of directing this at you directly. Your question's a good question, and it's a fair question, right? So let's deal with that first. All right, before I, I run. <laughs> um. No, there's no real drills other than the ones I've already shown in like zero to shodan in terms of just practicing that sudiashi. Do it in your kitchen or whatever. Um, if you've got wooden floors at home, something like that. It's just practice and it's not going to fix itself in a week. Yeah, it's not going to fix itself in a month. It, it, it needs like a couple of years of really focusing on it every time you do it. <laughs> every time. 
every time you do Subidi, every time you do Sudiyashi, focusing on pa -pam, pa -pam, not bam 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 but pa -pam, pa -pam, focusing every time uh, and it takes a long time <laughs> all right um that's that's it and 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 the reason i'm talking about like going off on a run is like i said this isn't directed at you at all your, your question is perfectly um valid all right but there aren't any secret drills that make things happen faster. All of the drills are out there, all right, for the most part. All of the drills are out there. There's no sort of secret one that, you know, this one makes you do the hikitsuke, the moving the left foot faster, um, you know, uh, quicker than any of the others. It's just your repetition and your concentration, I'm afraid, okay? Um, I'd love to be able to say, oh, yeah, just, just like, you know, do this. And, you know, you could do things like tie elastic bands around your waist and stuff. I've seen people do that, but I've not seen a lot of proof that any of that stuff really works. Um, to be honest, at least at the fundamental stages. Uh, if you're talking about pushing past into really advanced, um, you know, once you've got a good foundation there, like pushing that even further, that's, that's different. But um, when we're talking about like getting from being able to do it from being able to not really do it. That's, that's different, different conversation. Okay. So just keep trying. You'll get there. You'll make it. Okay. Uh, hi Andy. I hope you're doing well. Lately in Jigeko, I noticed that my left leg is weak uh, when launching forward to hit men on my opponent. The result is getting hit first, even though I initiate first. My peers mentioned that I slightly lean forward with my men strike. Could leaning slightly forward uh, right before launch really affect the speed of my attack? Uh, thank you for coming around. Um, excellent question. Yes. The answer is yes. Leaning forward makes your attack slower. <laughs> As does leaning backwards. If you lean forward, your right goes, you, you, right, you, your weight goes forward onto your right leg. So you can't launch properly off your left leg. When you launch off your left leg, it's slow because your body weight is, is, is distributed too far forward. It's not where it needs to be, yeah? That's why if you, in your kamae, if you, if you lean back too much, the opposite almost happens and you sort of launch upwards, right? <clears throat> so it needs to be, it's not evenly distributed, but almost, like I've said before in these uh, feedback videos, it wants, you, you, your kamae needs to be an A shape. It doesn't want to be like an S shape, yeah? So that you can launch off the left leg and you need to have your weight sort of distributed towards your left leg so that power can pam launch you forward quickly and instantly. Whereas if it's leaning forward, this is what's going to happen. All right. So even if you initiate first, you're not going to get there first. All right. So you are right. Leaning forward is definitely going to affect the speed of your attack. So work on your kamae. All right, it's your kamae that needs working on uh, to make sure that your uh, weight is evenly distributed. Okay, not evenly, but correctly distributed. Okay. <laughs> uh, next one. Hi, Andy. Usually we're taught to go for the opponent's right kote, but is the left one just as valid? Are there circumstances where hitting it is an if one? Okay, so um, whilst the opponent is in chudan no kamae, you cannot hit the left kote. It's not a valid target. Okay, so um, you are only allowed to hit the right kote. If they're in any posture other than chudan no kamae, all right, so if they're in jordan or if they're in gedan, I don't know why you would attack left, left kote if they're against gedan, in doing gedan, but uh, if they are blocking like this, then you're allowed to hit the left kote, okay? Um, other, if, if, but if they're in chudan, you're not, okay? You're just not. Uh, so that's it. It's simple as that. It's in the book. It's in the rule book that actually. So, okay. Last one. Hi, Andy. Uh, I recently joined a kendo seminar and one of the sensei mentioned I should work on my sae. Could you please explain what it is? How does it relate to tenuji and how to work on it during practice, keiko and outside at home where to focus? Thanks. So, um, Sae is a word that's probably not used enough in the West in ref re reference to how we make our strikes. Uh, in Japanese, the word sae, um, it's really cool kanji, actually. I love it. It's, uh, let's see if I can show it you. It means clarity. 
Um, it, it can mean like um, it can mean other stuff too. It can mean like uh, skillfulness, but in this case, really, it means uh, it means clarity. Um, this one, this one, say it. Um, so what it means is like that sort of sharpness or crispness of the strike, right? And you use good tenoichi to achieve it. Okay, so if your strikes lack say it then <clears throat> either your tenuchi needs improvement or uh, your strikes lack kentai no ichi. Um, so it could be both. <clears throat> uh, so in terms of developing it, what, what you need to do is you need to get enough flexibility in your wrists so that when you make your strikes, it's not like a this way, but it's this way. Pam. Pam, 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 that way, okay? And that'll have that, and not, okay, I'm not sure if the microphone's picking up the difference, but it's, it's not this kind of strike in kendo, it's this one, this one, yeah? Pam, yeah? Pam, yeah? <laughs> uh, and that's that's definitely required, um, okay? Uh in terms of working on it, the only way you can work on it is just to focus on it, all right? And it's it's using, it's a, it's a bit like what I said before. When you make a strike, yeah, you need to put the force into the kensen and you do that from using your left hand to swing the shinai, all right? And that's going to generate the speed in the kensen because it's the furthest point away, right? Um, when you swing the shinai. Well, then at the last minute, you need to use both your uh, hands and your wrists for that snap yeah the snap of the wrist pam, 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 pam. Uh, like that way all right i know you can't really see it great on the on the camera um so that's what you really need to think about all right is that wrist flexibility all right uh one thing you can do at home is you can do the kind of sabuti where you um let's see if i can do it i haven't got much space in this place but where you move your wrists around this way, yeah? See if I can do it this way. And then do it on the opposite side as well. I'm trying not to bash my computer, yeah? This way. Try not to open the hand like that. Try to use the wrists to turn the shinai on both sides. Do it on both sides. I don't have the space without smashing up my computer. But, <laughs> yeah, you can try this kind of sabuti. Try and get that little bit of wrist flexibility that will help you get that snap, okay? You need that. You need to be able to relax your wrists, yeah? Bam! That way. Bam! Okay? That's uh, that's what you need to think about, okay? And that will help your strikes have say it, okay? That's it. Thank you for joining me today. We had loads of questions there. A fantastic episode. Look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.